So let's talk about boundary conditions. So now, you know, in the in the 1D case, we really just had two boundaries, two two grid blocks to worry about, one on the far left and the one on the far right. But now we can have multiple boundaries, multiple grid blocks along the boundary. Right? And usually, the far, by far the most common boundary condition is just no flow. We, you know, we typically think about a, a reservoir that's sealed in isolation. There's no flow going out of it, and then we poke wells in it, right? Injectors are producers. Okay. Um, and that's why in the that's why in the exercise on Tuesday you had to put that fake grid block on the end to represent a constant pressure boundary condition because CMG doesn't even have the ability to uh, have a constant pressure boundary condition. So you know you're essentially faking it by creating a really small grid block and giving it a really high permeability. Uh, so. The, um, that no flow condition, right, the Neumann boundary condition, the no flow is the Q, um, so, so we're talking about uh, coming in or out of the, the right hand or left hand side, then it's uh, Q minus a half J is just zero. So <clears throat> if you go back to the mass balance real quick, where we wrote the whole thing out, <coughs> if, if you remember, I don't, it's on one more slide back, right? So let's see. Uh, right. The, remember, so these, I wrote each of these as Q. Q coming into a grid block, Q is this term, right? So if I'm going to set Q equal to zero, I just need to set that whole term equal to zero. This whole term becomes zero. And of course, one way to do that is just, I mean, this is, this is the entry in your stiffness matrix, right? So just set that to zero, you're good. So again, when you write the whole mass balance equation, this is just this is just the sum of the Q's. This is the uh, Q coming in from the left, Q coming in from the right, Q coming up from the bottom, and Q coming down from the top. So you just set the term on the right boundary, on the correct boundary, equal to zero. If it if it has a flow, which again we this is not in general what, not what you'd have, but if it has a flow, because possibly you know there's some aquifer feeding into it, or uh, you know in this case we're not talking about a well, but maybe it's a well right on the boundary, then you just set that into the you just set it to whatever the the flow rate is, you just set that, whatever the flow rate is under standard conditions. Uh, so if you have a flow boundary condition and you, you just lump that in with the well vector. So in the, in the, L, in the L entry of the well vector, you just add whatever f flow, inflow you have, whatever term you have. And for the Dirichlet, it's, a, it's, exa it's exactly what we had in, in the 1D case. Uh, QL is 2TXL, the pressure at the boundary. So the Dirichlet condition is a constant pressure boundary condition. 
minus PL. So the pressure at the boundary minus the pressure in the well. And, and where that came from is, you know, if we look at the Q, I minus a half J, that, that would be equal to K X A DW delta X times the pressure difference. So this is just Darcy's law, right? Well, if this, if this is a boundary, if Q I minus a half common J is a boundary, then you have Q X L times H times delta Y all over mu DW <coughs> delta X over 2. Because remember, the, the flow vector is like last time when I was talking about the, the flow vector. If it goes from here to the center of the block next to me, it's the same flow vector as if it goes from here to the wall. Right? It's the same. It's the same flux vector. So from here to the wall, in this case, the wall's a boundary, so there's nothing on the other side. The wall's a boundary, so that's delta x over 2. And that's equal to 2kx l h delta y over 2. mu dw delta x. And then the, the pressure difference, which I should have wrote it here, pressure at the boundary minus pressure at the wall. Pressure at the boundary minus pressure at the wall. And then, of course, this is T x. I should also say that I minus I have comma J in this case is equivalent to L. They're, they're all PB minus PL. 